Performance is one of the major concerns among Tableau developers looking to build sustainable, data-driven visuals for companies around the world. In this section, we'll cover the basics of performance evaluation, including internal versus external factors, VizQL processing, recording tools, event types, and key performance factors. Goals for this section include determining a dashboard's purpose, scope, target audience, and performance expectations, review common internal and external performance factors, understand how Tableau processes data and which steps present the largest opportunities for optimization, learn how to record performance and interpret results, and identify key performance factors like data design, filters, calculations, layouts, and visuals. Now that we've talked through the topics and goals for this section, we'll be covering why performance is important. Now let's take a quick look at why performance is important. Workbook performance drives speed to insight, a user's analytic flow, and iterative workbook development. Optimizing dashboard performance is one of the most important responsibilities for an analyst. Let's start by taking a high level look at our three main performance deliverables. First is speed to insight. Speed to insight is a key force in driving visual analytics. Faster insight leads to quicker business decisions. Next is analytic flow. Keeping analysts in the flow can improve efficiency and help drive high quality insights and analyses. And finally, iterative development. Speeding up performance can reduce dashboard development time and drive better throughput during the development cycle. Speeding up development cycles will lead to better and more comprehensive visualizations, which better meet business expectations. It's clear that speed impacts many facets of our analytic world, and increasingly we are reliant on quick analytics in both our daily and work lives. Up next, we'll be diving into another core driver of visual analytics, dashboard types and their purpose. The types of dashboards we develop vary in terms of data scope, data freshness, audience, and consumption method. Each of these points will impact dashboard performance and the methods that we'll use to optimize those dashboards. Dashboard types are broken down into a few different areas. First, the generic types can be broken into ad hoc, proof of concept, and production dashboards. Your ad hoc dashboards will be used by your daily analysts, drilling into your information to find answers to their business questions. A proof of concept is a pre-production version of the dashboard that you're working on but isn't fully baked. And a production dashboard is obviously the final product that you've worked hard to develop and optimize for end users within the business. Now there's a cross section going across all three of these types, including our data scope, our data freshness, our audience, and our consumption method. Let's take a quick look at the differences between each of the dashboard types and the variables related to them. First, let's look at data scope. An ad hoc dashboard will require a broader set of data, while a proof of concept will narrow the data to cover the limits of the dashboard build to prove out the metrics, visualizations, and more. Production dashboards will filter the data down just to the relevant information needed for the use case in question. This will help optimize performance for a broader audience. Now let's look at data freshness. Data freshness will also vary by type, with ad hoc and production data sources needing either scheduled refreshes or near real-time data, depending on the use case. This will depend on the needs of the business and can vary pretty widely. Proof of concepts, on the other hand, should only need a static data pool or even a mock data set to get started. Now let's look at audience. Audience is an important factor in dashboard type. Ad hoc dashboards will be used by hands-on analysts developers, and web authors who need to drill into the detailed data. Proof of concepts will have a limited amount of exposure, primarily among developers and the QA team who will check the dashboard to make sure that it meets requirements prior to launch. Production dashboards will have the widest audience, the business users themselves. Now let's look at consumption. Consumption is closely tied to audience. Since both ad hoc and proof of concept dashboards require hands-on work from tech-savvy team members, Tableau desktop, and some browser usage is likely. Production dashboards will be accessible on a broad range of platforms, depending on the audience. 
it's clear that a dashboard's type and purpose, inclusive of the data scope, data freshness, audience, and consumption, is an important consideration when planning and optimizing for performance. These factors are the guardrails that we must operate within and accommodate for when we're developing. Up next, we'll be discussing key performance questions to ask before you build your dashboard. Before you start building a new dashboard or you're optimizing a dashboard which is already built, consider the following questions. Number one, what is the granularity of the data needed for the dashboard? After reviewing the dashboard's purpose, you'll need to determine what level of detail is needed to answer the business user's questions. Do you need order line level information or will monthly sales trend do? The answers to questions like these will make a huge impact on the dashboard data size and overall performance. Number two, where's the data sourced and how is it managed? Knowing the detail around the data source itself is vital to understanding your options related to the dashboard performance. Are you connecting to a published source controlled by another team? Or do you have full control and freedom over the related data? Number three, how often does the data need to be updated or refreshed? Data freshness is a major factor in how your data is stored and organized. Data that needs to be real time will require live connections, which have their own set of performance optimization steps and limitations. While extracts would open up a huge amount of flexibility and performance enhancing options. Number four, what is the current performance expectation, if any? It's important to know if the team has any preconceived expectations around dashboard performance. They may be comparing to other programs, systems, or even apps on their phone. Even if they are not realistic, it's important to get this baseline out of the way so that you can set some expectations around acceptable performance for your dashboard. This will help head off a lot of headaches and surprises later on in the development cycle. All of these factors can have a significant impact on dashboard speed and performance, so they're important to consider early on in development. It should be noted that good performance is relative to your audience. For some teams, 20 seconds is amazing. For others, any rendering time over three seconds is going to be considered a failure. Understanding what's acceptable and the norm for that team is going to be very important when you're developing your dashboard. Up next, we'll be talking through internal versus external performance factors. Workbook performance can be impacted by both internal and external factors. Internal factors are those within a developer's direct control and should be the first point of optimization. External factors may be within their control, but are likely either environmental or controlled by other members of the team or company as a whole. These factors can still be optimized, but will require outside assistance. Let's take a quick look at the internal factors that we can control directly. First is the data source. Regardless of if the source is locally accessible file, database, or published source, the developer will be able to perform some optimization on the source itself via filtering, showing and hiding fields, aggregation, and more. Additionally, developers will be able to impact performance improvements directly within the workbook. This is where the developer has almost total control. They can change visualizations, filters, actions, dashboard size, pretty much anything inside the workbook a developer control and optimize for performance improvement. Now let's take a look at some examples of external factors. Underlying database structures and permissions may be out of the developer's reach. If they are not within their reach, they'll have to ask for changes from their database administrators. Either way, they're going to have to control this from outside the Tableau platform. The Tableau server may also be out of scope, depending on the developer's permissions and role. But this too can also be requested. Though if the organization is large, change is likely slower to happen. Additionally, a lot of the changes that you may request for the server are going to impact all users, not just those who are using your workbook. The final external factor is network. Internet speed is always a difficult factor in addition to VPN connections, remote desktop, and more. It's best to test and develop locally, which will give you the best baseline performance results. These baseline results will likely become a bit slower on server, but testing locally first is the easiest way to get a feel for performance. Now that we've taken a look at internal versus external factors, we'll be looking at VizQL and Tableau workbooks. 
Tableau workbooks are built and visualized using a specific data processing path. At the heart of the data processing within every workbook is VizQL, or a visual query language. VizQL is the driver for converting data input from users into queries against data sources and transmitting the data returned into visualizations within Tableau itself. The data processing path follows eight key steps. Request is the first step where a user selects a dashboard or action within a dashboard. Next, the initial layout is rendered but not populated with data just yet. Then, VizQL converts the user input into a structured query and sends it to the connected data source. The data source, be it local, published, or live connection, is accessed and data is pulled. Once the data is pulled back into Tableau, calculations on the Tableau side are computed. Next, the layout is finalized based on the results of the query. Then a server-side or desktop-side rendering of the visualizations is completed. And if you're using Tableau Server, the final rendering happens on your client-side browser. Desktop users will skip this step. Now as an end user, these processes usually run so quickly that you won't notice them. Some run behind the scenes, but generally you'll see the dashboard start as a blank screen and then populate with data and visualizations. The biggest opportunities for optimization within the workbook data processing path include query, calculations, rendering, and layout steps. Now that we've taken a look at VizQL and Tableau workbooks, up next we'll be talking through performance recordings in Tableau Desktop and Server. Tableau Desktop includes performance recording tools to track object load times, both locally and on Tableau Server, in order to identify and target potential areas of improvement. An important note, Tableau Public does not include performance recording as an option. If you'd like to leverage performance recording, please go to tableausoftware.com and download a trial or full version of Tableau Desktop. You won't need the performance recording functionality for the bulk of this course, so if you'd rather use Tableau Public, just follow along for the next few sections and time your dashboard manually to evaluate your performance improvement over time. If you'd rather run the performance recordings yourself, go ahead and go to tableausoftware.com and download a trial of the full desktop version. Performance recording can be done both in desktop and server. To eliminate potential external factors, start with desktop performance recording with a local source. Published sources, which are published separate from workbooks on Tableau server, can add between five to 10 seconds of additional lag time for a fully rendered dashboard, depending on latency, connection type, and more. Additionally, a local source is needed in order to examine queries generated in SQL. Published sources, when run through a performance recording, will come out in HTML format. Let's take a look at running a performance recording in desktop and then in server. For Tableau Desktop, you'll go to your Help menu, go down to Settings and Performance, and then choose Start Performance Recording. Once you've gone ahead and rendered your dashboard, you'll go back to the same menu, but instead of Start Performance Recording, you'll see a new option for Stop Performance Recording. Make sure that when you run your performance recording, you're not overcomplicating it. Go ahead and just render your dashboard for the first one and see what your time is. If you perform too many actions during your performance recording, it can be hard to unravel what exactly you need to tune. Once you've chosen Stop Performance Recording, a new workbook will open with your results. The process is similar on Tableau Server. For Tableau Server, you're going to get the URL for your dashboard, and then you'll add the URL parameter below before the ID portion of your dashboard web address. You'll see that we're calling out record performance equals yes. Recording on your dashboard will begin immediately. At any time, you can go ahead and hit the performance icon, which is on the right-hand side of your dashboard, and it will deliver a workbook which has been recorded up until that point. Note that you can keep hitting the performance button and more workbooks will be made until you close the browser tab or remove the parameter from your URL. We'll talk through interpreting the performance recording workbook in the next lesson. Now that we've talked through a high level overview of performance recording, let's record an initial performance recording for our workbook to establish a baseline. After that, we'll take a look at our performance recording results. So we're in Tableau Desktop, you're gonna to wanna to open up Tableau desktop performance underscore start. This is our initial workbook that we'll be working off of. You'll notice that we start on this blank page. 
You'll always want to run your performance recording from a blank page so that you get a clean cut of the performance recording. You don't want anything to attempt to render or run a query until you want it to. So that's why we always save our workbooks on a blank page if we're going to end up running performance recordings later. So to start our performance recording, we're going to go up to the Help menu. Then we'll go down to Settings and Performance. And at the very bottom, you'll see Start Performance Recording. Note that you're only going to see this if you're using the full version of Tableau Desktop or the full version of Tableau Desktop as a trial. You're going to want to go ahead and download that now if you haven't already, if you want to run the performance recordings on your own workbooks. So we'll go ahead and click Start Performance Recording, and the performance recording will run. Then we'll go ahead and we'll go over to Cycling Dashboard Slow, and we're just going to click on it to have it render. All right, now that the dashboard's rendered, we'll go back up to Help, go down to Settings and Performance, and we're going to choose Stop Performance Recording. All right, you'll see your performance recording workbook pop up on your screen, and you're going to want to go ahead and save this as Tableau Workbook Performance Baseline. This will allow us to save off this baseline performance recording so that we can look at it later and compare it to our improvements. Now, you're going to want to run these performance recordings a few times so that you can get a nice range. Performance recordings will not be the same every time. So it's good to go ahead and do maybe three or four of these when you're testing things out, just so that you can get a good range of where your performance is coming in at. Once you get good at these, you'll know exactly when you want to run them and how many times you might want to run them to check on the performance. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this as Tableau Desktop Performance Baseline. Click Save. Up next, we'll be talking through interpreting our performance recording results in Tableau Desktop. Performance summaries include a timeline of events, a sorted list, and related query details around your workbook. After a performance recording is stopped, the performance recording workbook will automatically appear. Note that Tableau Desktop is required to run your performance recording, and Tableau Public can't be used for this. So make sure you download and use the trial version or the full version of Tableau Desktop to do your Tableau performance recordings. The performance recording workbook can be difficult to interpret at first. Here are a few quick tips on interpreting the results. The first visualization on the workbook is going to be your timeline. This section gives your events in the order that they happen and shows the duration of each event. The best use of this section is to find which dashboard or worksheet combinations are driving the worst offenders in terms of performance. This will help you go back to those specific sheets to try and clean things up. Next is the events list. Events are sorted in descending order, starting with the longest runtime event in your workbook. You'll want to concentrate on the biggest bars in this section. Click on the bars or filter them to drill down on the timeline and query that you're looking for. Note that your executing query option will be colored in green. Finally is your query details section. This section will be blank until you click on a green bar in the events list area. Once you click on the bar, you'll see code show up in the query details section. Note that your source will need to be local if you want to read the query in SQL. If it's a published source, it'll come out in HTML code, which is much harder to read for the average analyst. We recommend running performance recordings after each major efficiency modification that you make to your dashboard. This will help you isolate the steps that you've taken and look at the marginal improvement between each. Now that we've talked through a high level overview of performance recording results, let's take a look at our initial baseline recording and review the results in our own workbook. All right, so the first thing we want to do is open up our Tableau Desktop Performance Baseline Workbook. Note that we created this in the last lesson when we ran our initial performance recording on the slow version of the dashboard. This is undoubtedly going to be some of our worst performance recordings that we look at throughout this course, but it'll give us a good baseline to see where our worst executing queries and events are coming from. You'll see that you have a slider up top which allows you to slide for your minimum time of an event. The default minimum time is 0.01 seconds, but you can always show the remainder of events that are actually less than that. Now, they're not going to be material for you to optimize at that time length, but you can always drag this over to show them all, just so that you can see everything that's happening inside your workbook. Let's go ahead and change that back to 0.01, and then we can see the most important events in our workbook. 
Now inside your timeline, you'll see that this is broken down by your workbook, your dashboard, your worksheet, and then the event itself. You can see that some of these events will happen in parallel and some will be sequential. This will be important to interpret as you're drilling down into each event type. Then when you go down to your events sorted, you can see from worst to best performing how long each of your queries and events took. Now, as mentioned before, to see the detail on an executing query, you can click on the green bar and you'll get your query text down here. Now, the best way to interpret this is actually just to right click, go over to copy and copy your data. This will allow you to paste it inside a text editor. I'm going to go ahead and copy this data out. And I like using Notepad++, so I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. Now, when Tableau generates your query, it's often in a SQL-like code. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go over to my language, go down to S, choose SQL. And then the key here is you're going to want to remove your initial quotes. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now it's got it broken out in a nice color coding so that it's easier for me to read. If I go back to my workbook, you'll see that it's much more difficult to read in this form, even if you were just to go to the sheet and see the details here. You go ahead and fit your width and drag things down, but a little bit harder to read inside your workbook. Copying it out will make it much easier. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save my workbook. And up next, we'll be talking through performance recording event types and what to do with them. Up next, we're going to take a look at our performance recording event types. Various event types are tracked during recording, which can help you understand the largest opportunities for speed and performance improvements for your workbook. Let's take a look at the most common event types that you're going to be optimizing. First is connecting to data source. This event is associated with long connection runtimes, which can especially come up with published sources. You can try and solve for this event type by using extracts instead of live connections, using data source filters, and embedding your data source connection. Next is sorting data. This will come up with visuals with high mark counts and sorting applied to your visualizations. These types of processes can be particularly taxing within the workbook. You can try and solve for these by using data source filters, aggregating your extracts on visible dimensions, and removing marks from your view. Next is computing layouts. You'll see this event with dashboards that have many sheets, objects, and dynamic sizes for their dashboards. To help with these event types, you can remove unnecessary visualizations and marks, specify your dashboard size, and stay away from automatic dashboard sizing. Next is executing query. This is a really common event type that you'll have in every workbook that you own. It's not that executing queries are bad, but especially long-running queries can be non-performant for your workbook. Long-running queries are usually exacerbated by high data volume, complex functions, and view-level calculations like table calcs. To help with long executing queries, you can specify action filter fields, remove only relevant values from your filters, and replace normal filters with parameters and set actions. Next is the blending data event. This will happen when blends are applied across data sources in calculations or worksheets, or when using cross data source filters. To help with this, try and leverage relationships as they'll be a more efficient model than blending data. Up next is geocoding events. Granular geospatial maps and custom geocoding can create additional load on your workbook. To help with this, try and raise the grain of the geocoding that you have inside your workbook to a higher level. For example, if you're showing postal code, try and roll up to city or state. In addition, try and filter your data down so that you're not focusing on the entire globe and you're just focusing on a specific region. Next is server rendering. Server rendering is a downstream impact driven by other events, such as layout, sorting, and more. This event will be impacted by your views and queries, and you should fix this at that level, as you, there's not that much that you can do once the server has rendered your workbook. Server rendering is more the effect than the cause. And finally, computing total events. Grand totals and subtotals create view level calculations, which can slow performance. You can help avoid these by removing subtotals, or at least some of them, and avoiding grand totals. Totals are inherently table calculations, so if you can substitute those for level of detail or other type of calcs, that can help as well. Now that we've talked through a high-level overview of performance recording event types, 
let's take a deeper dive into the recording event type results from our own workbook. Okay, so we've gone ahead and opened up our Tableau Desktop Performance Baseline Performance Recording inside Tableau Desktop. Let's go to our events sorted by time and just check out the worst defenders in this list. We can see that we have a very long executing query here. We've got some rendering time, and then we've got a bunch of compiling queries coming up after that. Mixed in with more rendering and then some computing layout as well. So we've definitely got some things in here that we want to investigate and some things that we can improve. We can also tell that if we release our filter, our total runtime is really running from 550 to 590. Now to get your total duration, you can just subtract those. That's about 40 seconds from start to finish here. And of course we run multiple performance recordings to get a good range, but that's quite a long time for our dashboard to render. Let's go over to our events tab and go to the sheet in particular. We're going to right click on our events tab and we'll go ahead and duplicate this because we don't want to modify the original. Now what we want to do here is just group our event types together. So we're going to go ahead and pull our start index off of the view and just drop it up top. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull our start index off and then we can see what our highest values are. Now these are all of our events stacked up so we can kind of see them individually, but we can see what our key areas are going to be. Looks like it's going to be rendering, executing query, computing layout, and compiling query, which makes a lot of sense. Doesn't look like we have too many subtotals or totals, but we'll take a look at that as well. Now these will change as we begin to optimize our dashboards, and some things will be ahead of others. Note that we'll be doing performance recordings after each major section of this course. Now this is the only time that we're going to dive in and run the performance recording with you, but you should be running this on your own if you have Tableau Desktop, and if not, we'll be reviewing the results of our performance recordings at the end of each section for you. That way we can look at the worst offenders for this section and the changes that we made. Up next, we'll be talking through workbook performance factors more generally. Up next, we're going to talk through workbook performance factors. There are four internal factors which primarily impact dashboard performance, including data design, filtering, calculations, and layout and visuals. You can think of your dashboard like a truck. You're delivering insights to your customer, not data. Your truck can only go a certain speed, so you have to make your truck as efficient and lightweight as possible to reach your destination quickly. Let's dig into the four workbook performance factors a little more closely. Data design is our first factor and represents the biggest opportunity for performance enhancement. If we break the factors down, data design could represent about 40% of our opportunity for improvement. Data design can represent raw data size, data modeling, column and row count, source type, and data source filtering. Next up is filtering at about 25% of our opportunity. Once data is brought into the dashboard, filters can be added as tools for end users and as aids for visual design. These filters add another way of data management, which can impact speed and performance. Next are calculations, which represent roughly 20% of our optimization opportunity. Calculations provide a great utility for developers, but need to be considered thoroughly in their construction and application. And finally is our layout and visuals. These represent about 15% of our impact, but shouldn't be underestimated. Often the priority in Tableau is design, but the layout of your dashboard and visualizations created can have significant impact on its performance. Even though we've given each of the four performance factor areas a percentage, any one of these areas, if poorly executed, can negatively impact performance on your dashboards. These are just general approximations. You should go through each area prior to launching your dashboard for consumption by the business. You may even see during this course that one area which would normally be less impactful may drastically impact our own dashboard. This is done by design to show that you should concentrate on all of these performance factors as any one of them could drastically impact your performance for the better or worse. In the next section of the course, we'll be talking through data design and its impact on performance in our workbooks.